I'm, uh, I'm uh, when I was hearing the Tony's words on how much needs to be done, uh, uh, what popped into my head, I thought I was showing you, we're, we're just getting started. And uh, you've been building it for 20 years, um, but there's something I'm probably only a few in this room know about. Uh, we have just formed a Robert Bateman Foundation. Uh, literally, we're months old. We have a, a terrific uh, executive director who used to be a student of mine when I taught high school. I had him for, I guess, at least 12 years of his high school, and he said at that time he drank the baby Kool-Aid. <laughs> he's been singing since. And uh, he's a marketing guy. He went into fine art and design and then marketing. And, uh, and uh, a bunch of us, uh, including his name is Paul Gilbert, and, uh, and, uh, and some of the Canadian leaders in this, in this field, but we were at a big conference organized by Richard Louv, uh, who is the great guru of this movement. You probably don't even know it's a movement. And uh, Richard Louv wrote the book, um, Last Child in the Woods. It's now the Bible of the Louv movement. Saving our children from nature deficit disorder. And that's a true phenomenon that has just happened in the last 15 years. I'm going to elaborate on that just in a in a minute, in a minute. It always has been creeping up on us, but it's getting absolutely horrible as far as ancient deficit goes. Um, and he had a conference, um, he has an annual conference at a beautiful big facility. You don't know about if you're an American taxpayer, you pay for it. Wonderful big facility uh, in West Virginia uh, on the, uh, I think it's the Shenandoah River in the Carolinian Forest there for conservation conferences. And uh, so it was the first one I attended with a, a bunch of Canadians. But there's, there's about 100, over 100 people representing different organizations, each of which maybe was representing thousands of people that are working toward getting kids back to nature. It's called the Grassroots Movement. They have a website, which is CNN, Children of Nature Network. Children of Nature Network. <laughs> and, um, I, if, you're, if you're good at Googling, which I'm not, you can, uh, but I've got people that can Google. <laughs> you, can, you can look it up. It's, it's profound what's happening. But I had this epiphany. Uh, we were there two days and two nights. I woke up on the second morning early, which I don't usually do. And I, I was thinking, there are incredible people here. There are uh, people working with kids there, and their specialty is the cool factor. How do you make going out in nature cool, competitive with video games uh, to teenagers. And that's what he's working. Another group is working with Latino kids. He was a, a early 20-something himself, wore his baseball cap on backwards and works with inner city kids. Other is working with Afro-Americans and taking them both in canoe trips, uh, kids. Another is working with, with Bible groups, with, uh, I think it was about a thousand Bible groups working at Christian con contingency, which I'm disappointed to say, although I consider myself a Christian, I'm very, dis I'm very disappointed. Well, these don't seem to be caring about nature much, some of these fundamentalist types. So anyway, that's a different topic. Um, and here, the, here were all these people. And as I said, there was over 100 of them, and I'd never heard of them. And I'm part of the choir. And I thought, this is atrocious. This is a dreadful thing that's happening to our entire population, the future population. And we've never heard, most of us have never heard of each other and what we're doing. I don't know how many people, if any, at the, at, at the big conference in West Virginia had heard of the Red School House, uh, what they should. So I concluded that the Bateman Foundation should be our role. We're not going to get a there and put the kids, you guys do such a great, great job and all these other ones. What we're going to get out there is broadcast that this is a huge issue. We need a critical mass of the population, the 80% of the population, don't even know or think about this, to and make it as up there in people's talking points as AIDS, breast cancer, you know, women, mothers against drunk drivers, all those really good issues worth supporting and everybody knows what they're all about. Nobody knows about nature deficit disorder. Hardly any people do. 
and yet it's creeping up on us. Um, the average kid spends seven hours a day, seven days a week. They don't take the weekend off looking at some kind of screen. And is this kind of screen uh, good for their heart and soul? Occasionally, of course, it's useful for doing homework. It's useful for you can, you can get bird watching apps, like Bird Peterson, <laughs> or whatever. And there's there's lots of great stuff in it. But I suspect these kids, and I have a slide I'll be showing tomorrow of a cartoon of a fat kid, you know, a, a vegetable basically sitting on a on a couch with his baseball cap on backwards, looking at a handheld device, and his other hand is in a big bag of potato chips. He's stuffing his body full of junk food and stuffing his brain full of junk food for the soul. Um, there was a cartoon uh, a couple of years ago, two young boys sitting on a stoop. One young boy says to the other, what are you going to be if you grow up? <laughs> if you grow up. We're now going to see, sorry, there's a kid here. <laughs> Terrific with a kid here tonight. <laughs> Don't th I'm not talking about you. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not talking about any of your kids. And I'm not talking about my kids. Oh, oh, by the way, I got my 10th granddaughter yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Born in Victoria from uh, my uh, oldest son. And now I got five kids, two from my first marriage and two from Birgit, and, and each of it, they each plan to have two kids, each of them have two kids, so if you invite us for afternoon tea, it's an even 20. <laughs>